My name is Stephen Smith and I've written Environmental Economics, a very short introduction. Here are 10 things you should know about environmental economics. First, left to its own devices, a free market economy will not deliver the level of environmental quality that people want. Firms can pollute, consumers can make choices without concern for the environmental consequences, and what we need is some level of environmental regulation, some level of government intervention, to ensure that those decisions take account of the interests of the rest of society. Second, environmental economics is about this necessary intervention in the workings of the economy. It's about how much environmental quality do we want and what's the best way of getting it. Third, environmental economics is not a dogma. It's a framework for thinking about the fundamental choices and trade-offs in environmental policy for weighing up the advantages and disadvantages of different courses of action. It can be used quite flexibly to think about a range of different issues in, in, in environmental policy. Um, environmental problems on the, at the local scale, um, local industrial pollution, for example, right through to the major problems of global climate change. Fourth. Eliminating pollution entirely is unlikely to be feasible, or indeed unlikely to be desirable. What environmental economics helps us to do is think about the costs and benefits, the advantages and disadvantages of more or less environmental protection. Fifth, environmental economists are sceptical about conventional legal approaches to environmental regulation. The so-called command and control approach to environmental regulation based on detailed legal instructions, can tend to be inflexible and excessively costly. Sixth, market mechanisms which use prices or taxes to discourage pollution are more flexible and can achieve reductions in pollution at lower cost. Seven, emissions trading systems like the European Emissions Trading System for carbon dioxide reduce pollution by setting a firm cap on emissions and allow flexibility by allowing firms to trade. Firms that have high costs of reducing emissions can buy permits from firms that are able to achieve emissions reductions more cheaply. And in this way, the system reduces the overall economic cost of achieving a given environmental outcome. Eight, a lot of research in environmental economics is about trying to assess people's concerns about the environment in the broadest possible way. Because environmental economics is not simply about the costs and benefits that figure in company accounts or, or things that cost money in the economy. It involves a much broader view of social value and of environmental benefit. Nine, tackling climate change will need coordinated international action. It's a global problem affected by the global concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and individual countries acting alone can make only a very small impact on the overall problem, but would incur significant costs from any action that they take. A real meaningful international deal on climate change is the only way in which we're likely to make significant progress. 10. Tackling climate change will require major changes in the way that our economy produces and uses energy, and in the decisions of firms and individuals about production and consumption. The economist's argument is that these major changes spread across all of society will occur or be achieved at much lower economic cost and much more effectively with less disruption to the way in which we produce and consume than if we tried to achieve the same outcomes through detailed legal prescription about how people behave. 